Welcome to The Well, I'm Anton Mount. And I am Brandon Edgens. And today we're bringing you something a little different. <laughs> Actually, a lot different. Mm-hmm. Uh, we normally, Brandon, we don't, we don't delve into the world of politics. Uh, you know, save that hellscape for, for other podcasters. But today, and I, I will actually argue that this is not actually a political subject. <laughs> it's about a lot of things, but <laughs> politics ain't one of them. Uh, you know, I was traveling this whole last like week and a half. And, uh, so I, I was super busy. I didn't have time to check my email or really check social media. I was just sort of going one thing to the, to the next, but I kept hearing little dribs and drabs about, um, (laughs) RFK Jr. and a dead bear cub and Central Park. And I was like, I was like, huh. I wonder what that was all about. So I got home last night and I came across um, a video actually that was done by other podcasters, uh, Tim Miller and Sam Stein. I, I think Tim, really, I love Tim Miller. I think that he is, um, he's well on his way to being the PJ O'Rourke of podcasting. He, he comes from Republican <laughs> politics and then became a, a podcaster. And um, Sam Stein writes for Politico. And the two of them did a review of this video. And I couldn't believe what my eyes were seeing and my ears were hearing. But I did feel that they maybe missed a couple of things here and there. So I thought we would do our own. Um, have you had a chance to review this video or did you save it for this experience? I saved it. I've, I've yes. been busy, so I've been busy too. So I, I again, I probably heard the same headlines that everybody else saw and heard. But uh, and then when you, you know, called me last night and said you wanted to do an episode, I'm like, I'll just save it till then. <laughs> Good. Well, without further ado, why don't we just get into it? A bizarre story from the presidential campaign race. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is in the headlines again, and he's trying to get ahead of what he thinks might be an unflattering story. The New Yorker magazine is planning to publish a story about how 10 years ago he left the carcass of a bear cub in New York City's Central Park as a prank. Kennedy posted a video to social media where he explained the incident to former television personnel. (laughs) Okay, first of all, yes. That is Roseanne Barr. Yes, they're (laughs) sitting in a kitchen. (laughs) And you'll soon see see that he's eating an entire slab of ribs. Um, I don't know whose kitchen this is. I don't know where this is. But of all people, so he has his, his PR team has decided that the way to get ahead of the story coming out in the New Yorker is to is to spill the story to Roseanne Barr. I can only assume that the idea is let's tell it to a comedian and it'll come off like, you know, uh, old, you know, boys being boys kind of prankster (laughs) story. (laughs) But they clearly, as you will see, did not brief Roseanne Barr on what the story was about. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. He said the day started with a trip to the Hudson Valley to do some falconry. Woman in a van in front of me hit a bear and killed it. A young bear. So I pulled over and I picked up the bear and put him in the back of my van because I was going to skin the bear. And it was very good condition, and I was going to and put the meat in my refrigerator. And you can do that in the York State. You can get a bear tag uh, for a roadkill bear. Okay, stop. Stop. <laughs> okay, that's useful news, I guess. Um, I, I don't know about you. And I do know, I, I'm sure that there are, you know, there are places that have season on bears. So I'm sure that there are places that um, serve bear steak. Uh, I don't think that would be my first thought if I saw roadkill bear, particularly a cub, and I'm going to go and fricassee it. But 
Apparently, that was the first thought going through RFK Jr.'s mind. Um, and he wanted to go from there. And I'm assuming that when he said he wanted to skin it, that he wanted to do so, that he wanted the pelt as well. I don't know. <laughs> it would I mean, be a small I, pelt. <laughs> it would be a small pelt. Maybe he was going to taxidermy it, and you know, I don't know. We'll we'll find out if he ever mentions that. Kennedy goes on to explain that he and his friends spent the day falconing, then had to shoot back to New York City for a dinner. He said the dinner went long, then he realized that he had to catch a flight and didn't want to leave the bear carcass in his car. Kennedy also explained that there had been a slew of bike accidents in the news in New York at the time, and the idea for what he calls a prank was born. I said, let's go put the bear in Central Park and we'll make it look like he got hit by a bike. It'll be fun and funny yeah. for people. So uh, everybody thought that's a great idea. So we went and did that and we thought it would be amusing for whoever found it or something. I think it's interesting that his first thought, you know, well, his first thought was to skin the bear and his second thought was to keep it and eat it. But then apparently third or fourth thought was, you know, to plant it in Central Park because it would be amusing to someone. Yes, that's well, he gets you find out who that is or what that what that is. They're basically been they've been drinking. They I personally think they were drinking all day. But uh, yeah, uh, this this has alcohol was involved written all over it. People falconing and uh, up in Goshen, New York, up in Hudson Valley. And I was supposed to meet them there at like maybe eight or nine. I was driving up maybe, you know, really early, like seven. And, and then woman in a van in front of me hit a bear and killed it, a young bear. So I pulled over and I picked up the bear and put him in the back of my van because I was going to skin the bear and it was very good condition and I was going to and put the meat in my refrigerator and you can do that in New York City, you can get a bear tag uh, for a roadkill bear. And so then I, we went hawking and I had the bear in my car and then oh, we had a really good day and we went late. We were catching a lot of game and the people really loved it. So we stayed late and instead of going back to my home in Westchester, I had to go right to the city because there was a dinner. Okay, stop, 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 <laughs> stop. Okay. As you can see, uh, the thought going through Roseanne Barr's mind is what? <laughs> is this man telling me? <laughs> and we can also glean that RFK Jr. probably isn't great at telling jokes. <laughs> right. This is coming off sounding like a confession <laughs> in a police station. <laughs> well, what's funny is that I think the idea is that if he's nonchalant about it enough, this is how you get ahead of a story. But this is one of those stories that isn't helped by getting ahead of it. It just makes it worse. So. And it isn't helped by getting nonchalant. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> it's like, so, dead bear. And so I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat the dead bear. And yeah, I'm uh, well, just going to throw it in the back of the car and go get some drinks like everybody does. <laughs> and I, got, I forgot, I got a flight later, so I'm going to have to deal with that. So. If you make it sound casual enough, people will just ignore the underlying <laughs> you know, facts of the matter. Uh. Yeah, I, I just I just killed somebody at the grocery store. And I yeah, buried yeah, yeah, the body no, out behind my barn. But uh, and I was I was hungry. I ate a little bit of it. I was that's because I was it's because I was hungry and I had a meeting later, so I had to eat it. And, had to eat the corpse. Yeah, yeah, I had to eat the body. Right, here we go. All right, but he wait, he did the same thing when he was kind of trying to like he kind of trying to talk off like like I had a brain parasite. Sure. You know? <laughs> yes. Which is, that happens. I'm not making fun of that. That's fine. But maybe this is the side effect of it. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's the parasite that wanted to eat the bear. Because <laughs> parasites are tricky that way. They can. That's actually, that's, a, that's yeah, that's a, that's beautiful insight. That's the theory I'm going with. Here we go. At Peter Luger's Steakhouse. And at the end of the dinner, it went late. And I realized I couldn't go home. I had to go to the airport. And the bear was in my car, and I didn't want to leave the bear in the car. Because um, that would have been bad. So then I thought... That would have been bad. You know, yeah. at that time, this was the, the little bit of the redneck in me. 
There'd been a series of bicycle accidents in New York. They had just put in the bike lane. Okay, stop. Saw people come. Okay, okay, stop. <laughs> stop. Of all the batshit crazy things that happened in this video, that is maybe <laughs> the batshit craziest. <laughs> RFK Jr. Mm -hmm. RFK Jr. just said mm -hmm. a little bit of the redneck in me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, a redneck. I'm sorry, man. As as somebody who has a little bit of redneck in him, I take offense to this. And and, and a redneck who was on his way to Peter Luger's before catching a flight at the airport. <laughs> yes, after after falconing. Yeah, yeah. After falconing, after and probably falconing. flying to Martha's Vineyard, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where he lives. Yeah, well, I mean, have you been to uh, the Peter Luger's establishments uh, throughout the uh, middle of Appalachia? It's dry aged steak and perhaps blue ribbon. All right. There'd been a series of bicycle accidents in New York. They had just put in the bike lanes and saw people, a couple of people that got killed. And it was every day and people had gotten badly injured. Every day it was in the press. And so I thought... <laughs> Uh, I wasn't drinking, of course, but people were drinking with me. Who? Oh, okay. Officer, <laughs> look at the look at the look at the look on Roseanne Barr's face. Oh, oh Roseanne Barr's <laughs> face hasn't changed at all for the past like minute and a half. Well, it's it's gone from what the hell is going on to you did something bad, <laughs> didn't you? That's a look of hesitant e expectation. Uh, how how much further is this gonna go? Oh no, he's he's not done yet. How much more of the story is there? What happens next? Um, I just want to also point out the bit about you know like I know he's he's already said that this is gonna be a joke. Well, first of all, he said he wasn't drinking, and I don't buy that at all. That's one of those you know. <laughs> Everybody, right. I don't think even if it's just his friends drinking, I don't think they were just drinking to Peter Lukers. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh no, no, been going on all day. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is this is tell that to the judge, right? I was not, <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm not a drinking man on duty, officer. Um, the, but no, but the, the the fact that he says that he's going to play this all off as a joke, but then he just casually throws in, you know, like there were all these terrible bike accidents and people were killed. People were getting injured. It was really terrible. Anyway, back to my joke. So. <laughs> I thought this was a good idea. And I said, well, I had an old bike in my car that somebody asked me to get rid of. it. I said, let's go put the bear in Central Park and we'll make it look like he got hit by a bike. <laughs> <laughs> fun, funny yeah. for people. So everybody thought that's a great idea. So we went. No, drunk people thought that was a great idea. And let, and let me point something out, right? The, his his part of the explanation is the fact he's running out of time. He has to make a flight, right? Right. And they have to figure out what to do with this bear so he can get to the airport. For those of you who are not familiar with New York geography, <laughs> <laughs> Brooklyn is not near Central Park. And Central Park is not near either of the two major airports in New York. <laughs> and even yeah. farther from Newark. <laughs> so something's not, something's not quite adding up here. Right. No, that's very, very, very true. So we went and did that and we thought it would be amusing for whoever found it or something. Or something. <laughs> uh, the next day, it was like... Uh, it was on every television station. It was the front page of every paper. And I turned on the TV and there was like a mile of yellow tape and there were 20 cop cars. There were helicopters flying over it. And I was like, oh my God, what did I do? And, uh, and then they were, there were some people on TV in Tyvaxes with gloves on lifting up the bike. And they're saying they're going to take this up to all they need to get a finger printed. Oh. <laughs> pause, pause, pause. Can you hear the people on his PR team behind the camera 
that's trying that to get the laughs going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the people. Those are the people. That's the guy operating the camera. And maybe somebody else trying to get the room laughing. <laughs> it's not really working. No, this is the funny part. This is the funny part. <laughs> right. This is where you laugh. This is the funny part. Yeah, I like that frame right there. I was worried. Look at her. Yeah, yep. yep, she is. I was worried because my prints were all over that bike. <laughs> uh, luckily, um, the uh, the story died down after a while, and uh, and it stayed dead for a decade. And um, the New Yorker somehow found out about it. I'm assuming he means the story and not the bear. So. <laughs> How found out about it, and they just they're going to do a big article on me, and that's one of the articles. So they asked me the fact checker to say, you know, it's going to be a bad story. The iris, the yeah. iris out. <laughs> That's the Looney Tunes. Da, 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 oh like my it. God. I like that it ends with him uh, saying, uh, this is going to be a bad story. And, then the, and, the P, and, the, and the PR person going, no, it's a good story. And it's a funny story. It's a funny story. Now, here's the kicker, Brandon. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen the story because it did come out. <laughs> here's the punchline. It's a two paragraph blurb. Buried at the back of the magazine. <laughs> that is far funnier than anything he tried to do. <laughs> he and his PR team freaked out, thought it was going to be a cover story, and created this massive news item. <laughs> well, did you see? I, 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 I'm sure. Call me I'm crazy, sure. but I'm not sure this is the best PR team. <laughs> no, no. Getting out ahead of the story like this and making it worse does not. <laughs> Is not how PR, is not how spin control is supposed to work. Yeah. You're, supposed to, you're supposed to spin your way out of the ditch, not into it. <laughs> Have you seen the other picture that came out? No. So no. do I get? So I get to uh, see something. You get to see this for the first time here. Uh, I guess so. There's another picture. Yeah. Well, have you seen any pictures? Oh yes, I did. I did see this. This is. Oh, you know, but but check, but look at this headline that we just just accidentally blundered into. RFK Jr. wildly confesses to dumping dead bear cub in Central Park a decade ago after brain worms and accusations of eating a barbecued dog. The long shot <laughs> presidential candidate is now faced with yet another absurd tale from his colorful past. Indeed. And I'm glad he's running. We're having a lot of getting a lot of stories out of this guy. There it is. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that's yeah, that's uh, RFK Jr. holding the carcass of a dead bear cub and pretending that it's biting him. But again, he is uh, on his way to the airport and a dinner at Peter Luger's. But he has <laughs> all this time. Oh, I forgot about the dead bear in my car. Like how do you how do you forget that? Was he like having a good time hanging out in Peter Luger and then suddenly like blah, 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 blah. oh <laughs> oh my god, dude, I I forget my reading glasses in the car all the time, right? It's a natural Same thing. thing to do. Same yeah. thing. Yeah, reading glasses, dead bear that you just <laughs> hauled out of, hauled off of the highway. Same thing. So I don't know how to end this. Uh, uh, I'm hoping we haven't seen an end to this. <laughs> well, look, look, this is from him. This is his Twitter. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it's still up. From him. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing how you spin this one, New Yorker. <laughs> I didn't notice that. <laughs> and what's great is that the New Yorker can just sit back and go, no, we're good. We're good. <laughs> we don't. No further comment. <laughs> you said it. You said you said enough. You said it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Um, and I thought it would be amusing for someone who found it. That's that's the part that still bothers me the most. Somehow, like <laughs> dead bear. 
<laughs> where people used to die on bicycles. That's going to be funny. That's going to be a funny one. <laughs> it's I, I, I don't I try not to, you know, outright hate anyone. Uh, but I, I, I think it's fair to say, that, uh, Brandon, that you and I have a uh, lack of patience with conspiracy theorists. And so it is uh, it is lovely uh, always when uh, something happens to the extent that we can laugh at them. And in and, and a year full of sudden left turns, um, this one somehow managed to really sneak up on us. I don't think it anyone is. Would. It's without a doubt the batshit craziest thing probably of this election cycle. And that is saying a lot. <laughs> It is. Hey, we got like what three more months? August, September, October. Oh yeah, God! I hope something beats this. I hope something beats this, and I really don't care where it comes from. Please. Do you, do you know what? You I, know what this is. You know what this is triggering. This is triggering <laughs> um, Jack Hitt's uh, definition of fiasco, right? Where oh, like yeah. when things start to go so bad. Oh that man, we should have had Jack do this with us, man. It's true. <laughs> true. We should get actually. He would probably have something to say about this because our our, our friend Jack hit the the writer, the raconteur. He's been on the show a couple of times. He's now he has a does a thing with us where we, where we all get together and predict the future. <laughs> yeah, which reminds me, we need to call Jack again and do and check on our last set round of predictions. Um, but. Uh, he has a he has this theory about fiascos when something goes so badly that I think uh, human beings normally you want order you want like if someone messes up you kind of want them to stop embarrassing themselves you kind of want um, normalcy again you don't want people to just flail out in public for too long it's but there's a thing that happens if it goes on for too long now you want more so now like I'll be disappointed if RFK doesn't do something even crazier than this, you know, like we're Absolutely. all, we're like, you've got us going now. You can't, <laughs> you like, we're loving it now. Like it was, you were just, you were, you were just a weird kind of sidebar for a minute, but now we're like all turned around in our chairs. Like <laughs> what? I mean, no, go on, go on. It surpassed the part where it's, it's bad politics. Like yeah, it's, nothing- it's so past that, that it, 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 in a strange way, like we're kind of, we're kind of loving it and talking a lot about RFK. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and Hey, I, I have a name for our, our new segment about the future with Jack Hitt. We already we already have one, but what's the new one? Crystal balls. That's that's the old uh, one. Is that the old one? Yeah, it was always called crystal balls. Oh, I must have. Did I bring it up? Did I did I tell you I was stealing that from Jonathan Myberg, who writes our opening credits music? I stole it from Jonathan before you stole it from Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> because we had this conversation, and I tell the story on the episode. And uh, the name of the episode is very juvenile. He got this joke in his head years ago, and he wants to start a band, a novelty band, called Crystal Balls. That's it. That's the joke. And I called him, he's in Germany now, and I called him this morning just to say that word to see if I got the same reaction out of him that I thought that I would. And I did, and I did, yeah. And I have decided, in your honor, your honor, I am titling the show Crystal Balls. <laughs> crystal Balls with, with Jack yeah. Hitt. Yes. Uh, I, I thought about calling it Our Crystal Balls, but I think it's kind of gilding <laughs> the lily. You know, <laughs> The reason I'm doing this to you is because it's happened on two or three occasions, and it's happening again right now, that we'll be talking, having a very serious discussion about civil war or, or the warlike nature of our species or whatever, yeah. and then it'll lead to this joke, and you get, and it so reliably pickles you every time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you're calling the episode? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I get it. Crystal balls. 
as yes. in prognosticating. <laughs> <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> you thought I was like, <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we'll set that up. Uh, in the meantime, thank you for joining us. This has been so much fun. Uh, and we will maybe we maybe we'll try to find more videos uh, to break down uh, before the end of the election season. We occasionally, you know, we started off with just the well, and then we started doing the drop. We briefly flirted with a segment called "How You Doing?" Uh, or no, what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? doing during the pandemic? We were just during the pandemic. Saying, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah, and, uh, and I think now we'll just call one RFK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Well is produced, edited, and recorded by Anson Mount and me, Brandon Edgens. Theme music written by Jonathan Myberg and performed by Brandon Edgens. Until next time, have a good time. Oh, that was great. I feel like I just took a massive, massive <laughs> edge. <laughs> Okay, I'm probably not gonna do this, but like since I was <laughs> since I was recording, I feel like that's that's the entire teaser <laughs> in its entirety. <laughs> you can you can use it, man. You can use all right, it. Okay, all right. Yeah. If you give me permission, that's all we're gonna say. Nature here is vile and base.